What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about how to get rid of those HTTPS security warnings in your home lab. So you know like when you go to one of your services that are running like Portainer or any of your other Docker containers and it pops up saying this site's not secure, do you want to go forward? We're going to get rid of that today and I'm going to show you right now actually what it's going to be doing. So let's get let's let's go right into what we're going to be doing today. So I've already worked on this in my lab and set it up, but what I'm going to show you is you know, if you go to Proxmox, usually it gives you a security warning. So now if I go to my Proxmox, which is going to be mini backup.barmine.org, see, I don't get a security warning anymore. So I'm going to show you how you can make it so you don't get one either. And even if I come up here and I get connection to secure, that there is a certificate. And you can see, here's the certificate. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this in your home lab and make life so much easier and get rid of all those HTTPS security warnings. The one thing you will need for this to make it a lot easier is a domain. You can get a free domain or you can use DuckDNS or any of the other cheap providers. Personally, I like to use Cloudflare just for the simplicity, so I'm just going to use Cloudflare just to make it easier. Um, but you can get your domain wherever you want, but like I said, I'm going to use Cloudflare just because all my domains are with Cloudflare. I've been using them for a few years. It just makes it easier for me. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up the DNS for that on, on Cloudflare, but it should be pretty much the same for all the other services. And we'll get that set up. We'll get the Nginx container kind of running. We're going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager. And I know there's a few of them in the Portainer template. So I'll show you which one to use. I'll show you how to get it set up. And we're going to get it all set up. And I'm going to say we can get this done in under 10 minutes. So let's get right into it. So there's one thing I forgot to mention. And I'm going to show you that right now. Because I know I'm going to get a comment below asking, Oh, I don't see the Nginx Proxy Manager in my apps for Portainer. So I'm going to show you that right now, how to set that up. So you can just come over right to Google and we're going to search Pi Self Hosted and we're going to come over here and we're going to look for Nova Spirit Pi Hosted. This is actually my buddy Don. You should check out his channel because he's the creator with a whole bunch of um, co contributors who create this whole template and they make it so all these Docker containers work perfectly on your Portainer instance for ARM, AMD64, all that good stuff. So check this out because I've done a couple videos with this and I use this app template all the time. But I'm going to show you how to add this in really quick so you can have the same app template that I have so it makes it easier to set up Nginx. So when you get into your Portainer instance, the first thing you're going to need to do is come over to Settings. And over here you're going to see it says App Template. And this is what's going to be important. So you're going to come over to the GitHub and you're going to scroll down. And over here it has Portainer Architecture. And this is where you need to pick the one for your system. So ARM32 is starting to get phased out because it's just not really a thing. We're really starting to move to ARM64. They're making better boards now. So it's either going to be you're an ARM system or an AMD64. I run my system off of VM off of AMD64. So I'm going to right click and copy one of these. And you could actually open this up if you want. And it shows all the template built out. So it's just a JSON file that gets used for Portainer. But this is how it all gets built out so you can see what you're copying. Once you copy it over, you can just come back over your Portainer instance and you're just going to paste the URL into there. And it will update your app template. And that's how you can come over here and get all the apps that you see that I have. Um, there's a lot more than what comes with the basic Portainer instance, and it also is set so everything writes directories the right way. So it maps your volumes properly instead of it just all being a mess. It keeps it all in one directory, and it's just a lot easier this way. So that's how you add that, and then you'll have all these containers that I'm using. So back to the video. First thing you're gonna wanna do is come over to Portainer and go over to your whatever instance you're running. So whichever one you're going to be using in which environment, I'm going to be using my local environment. And then you're going to come to app templates and you're going to want to scroll all the way down till you find Nginx. So when you do get over here, there's Nginx, there's Nginx Proxy Manager, and there's about five of them. I used Nginx Proxy Manager V2 with SQLite. This one seems to be, as the notes say, the one to use. Uh, V3 is out, but it's not ready. And the other ones are depreciated. So I'm going to use this one right here. So you can just click on it. There's no additional config you need to make unless you want to change your time zone. And then you can just deploy it. After it gets deployed, you're going to come over here. And you can see that it's running. Everything looks good. You're going to come over to the click on the ports. It's going to be port 8181. Uh, for some reason it changes around when you click on it, but that's okay. And then you're going to come over here the first time you're going to set it up. See, I'm already signed in, so I'll just sign out really quick. It's going to be admin at example.com. No, I don't think that's right. Hold on. 
Yes, I had to double check. Uh, the default administrator user is admin at example.com and the passwords change me. So if you come back over here, it'd be admin at example.com and then it would be change me all lowercase. I've already done this, so I'm just gonna sign up with my account and then we'll get to keep going with this. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do before we can really do anything in here is we're gonna need a domain. So whether you got it on Cloudflare, or you got it on DuckDNS, whatever it is, you need to grab that domain. So I'm gonna use barmine.org. And from here, I'm just gonna go over my DNS tab. Now this is how you're gonna to wanna to set it up in Cloudflare. Like I said, it's gonna be similar in any of the other services. You're gonna to have to make two records. You need to make a, a record for the domain and the machine that's gonna be hidden. So if you come back over to your Nginx, for me it's 192.168.50.87. So that's where the A record's gonna be hidden. So you wanna make a new record, A, you do whatever your domain is, and then you would put in the machine. So that's how you would set that one up. And then you don't want it to be proxied because it's gonna be used for local. So you just need the DNS only and you could live, leave the time to live the auto. Let me cancel that out. Now, this isn't gonna be a public facing thing. Yes, it's a public domain. Your computer is gonna resolve it to that internal address so everything will be all right. The next thing you're gonna need is a C name record and we're gonna need this because we need to make a wild card. So when you try to make additional services to have this, you could use it so you don't just have one. So to do that, you're just gonna make a C name record. So we'll just hit add record. We're gonna scroll down the C name and we're gonna put a star in there. Uh, star. Oh, I gotta click. Star. And then you would put in the target. So it would be your domain. So it, it would be star.barmine.org is an alias of barmine.org. So when they're able to hit it, it, it works. And then again, you're gonna turn off DNS. After you get these records set up, it could take a few minutes for it to actually propagate for the DNS, but it'll be all right. Now we can go back to Nginx and we get set up for our SSL cert we need. So in Nginx, it's really nice because it handles a whole bunch of different stuff for us. It's gonna handle the proxy and it's gonna handle the certs. So you're gonna go over to SSL certificates. Now I already made mine, so I can't make it again, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. It might be in the middle or it might show you know somewhere different over here because you don't have one yet but it, you just click on the button for add SSL certificate. And then you're gonna use Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is free, so it's really easy. You would just type in your domain name that you're using. So if I was using barmine.org, I would just add barmine.org. And then again, I'm gonna do star, I click in there again, you just star.barmine.org. Now we're doing this again, so we get the wildcard. So the wildcard will cover all the other domains, the other subdomains that are being used for our services. So if we're going to be using barmine.org, but then on top we might use homelab.barmine.org, this will also hit inside that wildcard. The next thing we're going to do is use a challenge DNS, and then you're going to select your provider. So if you're using Cloudflare, click on them. The one thing you do need to get is your API token. And to do this, you need to go in your profile on Cloudflare and get it, and you can make an API token for the specific domain. So I'm going to show you that really quick. So when you come over to Cloudflare, like this is the home page, you'd come over to the profile and you would select your profile. Over here on the left is API tokens. You would click over here and now you can create a new token. It's zone specific. So if you want to make it for one of your domains, you could do it that way. You don't need to make an API for everything. So I made a specific API just for barmine.org. Then over here, you would get that API and you would paste it in here. So now, this should be all set. You could just agree to the uh, terms and conditions. Being that we're setting up the DNS pretty much the same time we're trying to get a certificate, there might be a bit of an issue. It might just not propagate quick enough. So you could either try with no propagation seconds or you could try to give a delay. Yesterday when I was testing this out, I had to give it 120 seconds just because it needed some extra time to propagate. So you could either try without or with whatever one you want, but if you get the error message saying that, you know, something didn't work right and it gives you a whole uh, text box, you could just come over here and add 120 seconds. After this all works out, it'll have an SSL certificate and it'll look just like this. It'll tell you you're all good to go. The next thing to do is come over to hosts. We're gonna come proxy host. Now this is how we're actually gonna proxy this across our network and make everything work. So you can see over here, I have minilab.backup.barmine.org and it comes over to a different IP address. So this actually runs off a different machine and that can be done. You could do this for any machine in your home lab. It doesn't have to be 
the one that the portainer instance is running off of. So if I click over here now, you can see it opens up my backup server like I showed before, and it's secure. It has a cert. But if I come over to, let's say, Pi-hole, it's not secure. So we're, I, I'm going to show you right now how we can set this up. So I showed how it works for the Minilab, the backup one. But I'm going to show you how to set it up for like a regular proxy box. So, so we're going to click Add Proxy Host. And we're going to come over here. We're going to call it minilab.barmine.org. It's going to be HTTPS because that's what Proxmox is going to use. And I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to open it up. So it's it's not triggering the warning. That's because I've already done it and it's probably cached it. But if I come over here and just grab the IP address. So it's 251 and the port's 8006. So I would just come back over here. Paste that in. 8006. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff because it's not a public facing domain. So I don't need to worry about blocking exploits or anything else. We are going to come over to SSL, and we're going to use the certificate that we just set up. So mine is barmine.org, but yours will be whatever yours setup is. The next thing we're going to do is click the force SSL, and then we're going to do HTTP2 support. One last thing that I've noticed is sometimes the domains for their services, they might not work properly. You might just need to alternate between HTTP or HTTPS to find out which one works right. The page will display an error, and if it does, you just try changing it back, and it will work on one of them typically. So I'm going to click Save, and now I'm going to click over to Minilab, and we can see that my Proxmox host opened up, and it's secure. So if I was to go into another site, it's not going to give me the issue. So let me see if I can just replicate to show you guys how this works now. So I went to a new browser that doesn't have a cache, and you can see that this is the mini lab, and it's the same address we just were hitting, but it's given the security warning. So I'd have to hit through and proceed. And you come over here, you can see it says it's not secure, there's no certificate, all that stuff. But if I come over to minilab.barmine.org, we hit the same site, and now I have a secure connection. So you can see it's the same thing, it worked out, and I have a valid certificate. Again, it's hitting that barmine.org cert, and it works. So now it won't give me a security warning anymore. So that's the benefit of running Nginx Proxy Manager in your lab. Now, Nginx doesn't just have to be done with Proxmox. It can be used with any of your services. So you can go through all your portainer services, and you could route them out to use Nginx. And they'll have now certi certificates that will stop giving them security warnings when you go into them. And everything will have a secure connection. Now, sometimes the networking might be a little funny on Docker, but you're pretty much always going to be able to just use whatever the host is. I know you could try using localhost, or you can use like the localhost address, but personally I like just to put the IP address in for everything, and then specify the port. It just makes it easier, and it leaves less chance for anything else. Now, I know some people have said that you need to use a host file with this. Personally, I've set up a few hosts, I've been working with it, no issues. So we should be all good. This doesn't really need a workaround. There's nothing else that goes with it to make this work. It just works. So once you get your certificate working and you start making your host, you're all set. You're all good to go. You don't have to worry about, you know, another workaround or add something else to make it kind of work because it's going to work. So that was about Nginx Proxy. I hope you guys like this video and find it useful. I know that this is something that will definitely help in the home lab. It's just going to get rid of those extra clicks you got to make when you try to get onto your certain services that you host. No more security warnings, and now it has a certificate, so it's a secure connection. If you guys could like, comment, subscribe, it really helps the videos and helps the channel grow, and I appreciate it greatly. I know this video might have turned out to be a little longer than 10 minutes, but hey, we tried. Um, I also have a link below, I have links below to my Discord server and all my gear that I use off Amazon. If you guys want to check out any of that stuff and get it, it's all the stuff that I use in my home lab, and it works really well. So that's that's why I put those links down there, because it's stuff that I recommend. Other than that, I appreciate you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.